acknowledge the land this morning, I just invite you to take a moment and perhaps close your eyes if you're comfortable, feel your breath, and just allow yourself to be anchored here, in this moment, in this place, wherever you may be. 
And let us invite a prayer prepared by indigenous elders connected with the United Church. Let us invite this into our acknowledgement of the land. Great Spirit, we call on you. We ask you to be with us. We pray for all of those who are ill, and we pray for those we cannot be with as closely as we wish. When we're afraid, help us to remember and be grateful for water, which gives us life, to be grateful for the land which sustains us and restores us to health. Help us to be grateful for the wisdom of elders who guide us, for our young people who deserve a bright future, for our strength and resilience, which will bring us to a new day. Help our leaders respond appropriately to the specific needs of Indigenous communities. Help us to walk compassionately with all who are ill or afraid. And help us to understand that we are all relatives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. When the light of Christ is here already burning, and we can anchor in this light, inviting Jesus' Spirit to be with us as we worship today. And that light is with us wherever you are joining us from this morning. I'm so glad you're here. The welcome extends from Islington United Church, a community who doesn't think the same, vote the same, love the same, but we are all following in the way of Jesus. And on this day, we gather, it's Pentecost, and across the world, Christians are celebrating this feast day, this holy day, and the scriptures come to us and join us across the globe. And I want you to hear these words from the lectionary from the Gospel of John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. And those waters, they call you to this day. They remind you of the Spirit of God descending like a dove at Jesus' baptism. They tell you that he is beloved, and so are you. Spirit of God, be with us in this service today. Descend upon our hearts.
Good morning, friends. It's Michelle here, your Children and Families Ministry Coordinator. I hope you are all well. Today is a very special day. Do you know why? Today we celebrate Pentecost, in part as being the birth of the Christian church. So today is the church's birthday. And what better way to celebrate the birthday of the church than throwing a birthday party? So following the service at 12 o'clock today, Please join Amy and I for a godly play story, followed by some birthday party celebrations. We encourage you all to wear something red as we celebrate Pentecost together. Please email me at michelle at islingtonunited.org in order to receive the Zoom link. We look forward to seeing all our familiar faces, and again, we extend a warm welcome to any new friends that would like to join us this morning. We'll see you soon. In the circle of the church year that hangs in our family-friendly area and in the godly play classroom, there's only one red day. And when the children hear the story of Pentecost, they remember that this day is hot. And so we are grateful that that light, that flame comes to us on Pentecost and is with us here and in the godly play circle and wherever we are. And at our table, well, that flame burns bright this day with the light of those we love who are close, part of the cloud of witnesses, those who are honoring this day and missing, those who may have a birthday or an anniversary around this time of year and so feel on our hearts, those who have taught us about listening for the Spirit and making room to grow and change as the Spirit leads us into new life. Spirit, open our hearts.
And today, reading Psalm 104, we invite these ancient words to reach us today as translated by the message. What a wildly wonderful world, God. You made it all with wisdom at your side, made the earth overflow with your wonderful creations. Look how the deep sea, the wide sea, brimming with fish past counting, sardines and sharks and salmon. Ships plow those waters, and Leviathan romps in them. All the creatures look expectantly to you to give them their meals on time. You come, and they gather around. You open your hand, and they eat from it. If you turn your back, they die in a minute. Take back your spirit, and they die, revert to original mud. Send out your spirit, and they spring to life the whole countryside in bloom and in blossom. The glory of God, let it last forever. Let God enjoy his creation. He takes one look at earth and triggers an earthquake, points a finger at the mountains and volcanoes erupt. Oh, let me sing to God all my life long. Sing hymns to my God as long as I live. Oh, let my song please him. I'm so pleased to be singing to God. Oh, God, send out your spirit. Renew the face of the When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. 
And then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jewish people staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phygria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked. They're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow citizens, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy and also your daughters. Your young men will see visions and your old ones dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoke and the sun turning black and the moon red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous. And whoever calls out to help, God, me, I will receive it. Help will come. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, this special day, this Pentecost day, it marks 50 days since the Feast of Easter. We open to you our prayers. Holy Spirit, come to us. Speak amongst us. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the fire and burn in our hearts. Come as the dew and refresh. Consecrate our hearts and our lives to greatest good and your glory. Between the words that are said and the words that are heard, may your spirit of life be known. Amen. This is one of my favorite stories. It's a day when the spirit is unleashed. As we gather to celebrate Pentecost in our own places, we hear the familiar story of this coming of the Holy Spirit. It's the one Jesus promised who would come after him the Holy One who enlivens our lives and invites us to transformation. The Holy Spirit is described in so many different ways. And in the book Crossroads, the sequel to The Shack by William Paul Young, the Holy Spirit speaks of herself and says, I am she who is more than you can begin to imagine and yet anchors your deepest longings. I am she whose love for you, you are not powerful enough to change, and I am she whom you can trust. I am the voice in the wind, the smile in the moon, the refreshing of the life that is water. I am the common wind that catches you by surprise and takes your very breath away. I am a fire and fury opposed to everything that you believe that is not the truth, that is hurting you and keeping you from being free. I am the weaver, you are a favorite color, and Jesus is the tapestry. In our scriptures, the Holy Spirit is described in different ways. At the baptism of Jesus, the Spirit is described as coming down from heaven like a dove. Our Celtic ancestors in faith knew about doves, but thought that a more accurate avian image for God's Spirit was the wild goose. Wild geese are a lot like God's spirit. First, well, wild geese are wild. That is untamed, 
uncontrolled. They make a lot of noise and have a habit of biting those who try to contain or capture them. That's been the experience of Christians, of how the Holy Spirit shows up through 2,000 years. Secondly, the wild goose is one of the most communal of creatures, drawing its life from the flock. From observing the behaviors of wild geese, there are some lessons about community and being in relationship. The first is that flying in the V formation gives geese a 71% increase in flying range, with flapping wings creating an updraft for the bird following. Flying is a cooperative business. The second is that the lead goose in the V formation tires faster than the others. When the lead goose tires, it rotates back into formation, and another goose takes the lead. The third lesson is that when a goose falls out of formation, it feels the drag and resistance of flying alone and quickly finds its way back to the flock. Lastly, when geese are flying in formation, those flying behind honk to encourage those in front to keep up speed. God's spirit is a wild goose, uncontrollable, but focused on community and building and fostering relationships. We need this metaphor and image now more than ever. Another scriptural metaphor used to talk about God's spirit is the wind. Remember all the way back to the beginning of God's story? The book of Genesis starts with, in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Like its counterparts in Hebrew and Greek, the Latin word spiritus originally meant breath. Breath is what you have when you're alive and is gone when you're dead. Thus spirit, breath, life, the aliveness and the power of your life. And to speak of your spirit or soul is to speak of the power of life that is in you, in each of us. Theologian Frederick Bruckner says that God also has a spirit, is spirit, says the Apostle John. Thus God is the power of life itself and has breathed and continues to breathe life into creation. This inbreathing inspires us. It lifts us up, and it helps us notice the gifts of the Spirit in each of us. For later in the scriptures, when we learn from Christian communities who struggled to figure out how to be followers of the way, while they talked about gifts, different kinds of gifts, not expecting the Spirit to come in the same way to each of us, There are different kinds of gifts, the scriptures say, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and everyone, it is the same God at work. We feel that in this time of quarantine, we're invited into working in different ways. Some of us have had to cease our working and ended what has been identity for a long time. And in this temporariness of this time, we pay attention to the gifts that God has given each of us, how we've leaned on some and not others, how there are others in us we haven't paid attention to for a while. For to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of that same Spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another discernment and distinguishing between gifts, to another speaking in different languages and praying in different tongues, to still another the interpretation of those ways. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and that spirit distributes them to each one. So we pay attention. We don't find ourselves comparing or jealous of the gifts others receive, for no one is uniquely ready to share their gift but you. This calls us into unity as a community, 
It calls us to pay attention to the messages of God's love and grace that come to us in unexpected places, in other languages besides our own. For just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. So on Pentecost, no matter what's happening in each of our lives, may you find your heart knowing the Spirit is with you, singing with the Spirit of God, your ears humming with the voice of the Spirit, speaking in a language that reaches deep into your soul. And your eyes are there to listen and open anew, to see the work of the Spirit in the world. May you recognize the gifts of the Spirit in others and our unity in the Spirit. May you experience the transformative coming of God's Spirit and anticipate it in the waiting with joy and hope. Give into it with love so that when the day is done, all the world may know the love of God because of the gifts that you offer. May the spirit of the living God fall afresh on you. May the spirit of the living God fall afresh on us. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer together. Creator God, a great spirit, we pray for your world, a world which longs for the breath of your renewal. Fall afresh on us. The poor gasp under the burdens of oppression the trees of the forest and the fish of the sea can hardly breathe. Sweep the world with your mighty winds, blowing away hatred and injustice, disease and hunger, until the whole creation dances with your grace. Fall afresh on us. Descend as a dove. Cleanse us with living water. 
Help us explore, God, the ways we have been gifted by your Spirit for the sake of unity in community. And at this Pentecost moment, we enter into a new way of being church. Though spread apart, we are not alone. God will reveal creation's dream as we give thanks for whose we are. Christ will claim us as his own as we declare who we are. And God's Spirit will pour out upon us as we anticipate who we will become. And at this Pentecost, we take courage in the assurance of whose we are. We affirm our call to be Christ's disciples. And we trust the Spirit to guide us through the challenging space between who we are and who we will be. Surely, God, we are not alone, and we thank you. We thank you as we pray together, following in Jesus' example. Spirit moves us to generosity and what we offer to God is between us and God. There's an invitation to be part of the work of the Spirit in this community and beyond. I am grateful for all the ways that people are invited to give, virtually in the offering plate on the website online, by dropping off checks to the, in the mail, but also into the mailbox at the front of the church, and sending e-transfers to the office at islingtonunited.org, all ways that together we work to do Christ's ministry ministry as the body of Christ. The offering will now be received.
Thank you for helping us recognize the movement of the Spirit and the gifts that each of us have been given, Andrew and Jason. Let's join together in the offering prayer. Holy One, bless our offerings and transform them into compassion for others, into community for the lonely, and hope for the church and the world. Amen. The work of the church continues. You're part of that as we gather together online, but as we continue to look for ways that we're helping in the community There are good news stories to be shared and candles and prayers to be offered together following this service. So just stay on the website, wait a little while until the Facebook Live comes on and I'll be there joining with our community and sharing greetings with each other and so much more. Or if you wanna go directly to the Facebook page of Islington United Church, you can contribute and be part of that story and sharing. That's just one example but there's so much more, and uh, all of that information is on our website. I want to give deep thanks today, uh, not only for the team who helped us prepare worship, but for those who came ahead, for Jackie and Kim and their A&E crew, who are holding space to accentuate the themes and the message of each worship service. So may the Spirit continue to speak to you, and look for the surprises and the wisdom to come. Let's sing together our closing I forgot to tell you that we've picked the story back up, and you can turn to chapter 28, mark new beginnings, and for the next four weeks, we'll be finishing reading through the Bible together. So now's the time to be invited into a new beginning, for the God of unconditional love goes with you, and the power of Jesus, who risked for love while he's cheering you on 
and inviting you to pay attention to how the Spirit is working in our lives and in the world. Go in peace. Amen.